Could you explain what is IPFS, what the use cases are and how it works? Yeah, IPFS is a protocol by which information is findable based on its content as opposed to where it is. So usually when you have a URL, the URL is saying, hey, you need to go to a particular server, right? That's the host and a certain path in that server, then you get your content delivered back to you, right? That's all based on where the server is in the world. And you can have some additional technology layered over that. We're like going to that server then says, oh, wait, where are you? Oh, let's send you to this other server that might be a little bit closer to you. And that's what we call, you know, content delivery network, right? Or edge caching. Basically, IPFS takes that idea and turns it into a little bit more of a primitive by saying it doesn't matter where things are, right? Uh, you're just going to look up and say, hey, IPFS, give me this piece of content. And the way you do that is by what they call a CID or a content identifier. And the content identifier is a hash of the content itself. The hash, we just sort of this fixed length string, now becomes something where you can say, hey, IPFS, go get that for me. And there are multiple IPFS endpoints. Uh, Infura offers one, Cloudflare somewhat famously offers one for free, where you can get content that is hosted on IPFS from somewhere. Now, when I say hosted on IPFS, IPFS is not in anywhere. It is a set of servers that are all around the world that each is hosting some amount of of content. They decide what content they want to host. But because they are all, you know, notifying some set of peers that they exist, when you talk to one endpoint, the endpoint proceeds to crawl this web of networks saying, hey, does anybody have this piece of content? And then when somebody does, just says, okay, you, Mr. Caller, go talk to them and get the content from them. And based on that hash, it delivers you that piece of content. Now, this has actually a couple of interesting effects. The first is, it's not like just one server is going to host a piece of content, right? So like when I go to statechange.ai, it's always statechange.ai, it's always their version of the content. But the thing is, because the same CID will always represent the same content, anybody can cache it at whatever edge. And therefore, you know, it's basically the first one who shows up and says, I have it. And if other people know about it, they can decide to be caching more of it, or you can decide you want it to be hosted in more places to be easier for people to get to. You can download something locally, and it's not like it will ever expire. Once you get something based on CID, that CID will always refer to the same piece of content because it has that cryptographic relationship, right, with the original content. You might later want a different piece of content, but it's always the same thing. So that means you never have to go ask for it again. Your caching is always permanent and that can improve performance by quite a bit. They make an example of, um, you know, communicating between Mars and Earth, right? If you want a piece of content that might be on Mars, well, then you only have to get it once from Mars because later on it can just be cached on Earth and you can be asking for that same piece of content and because it's always based on the content, it doesn't matter where it is, right? And therefore it can be stored all around. Real quick, unlike Ethereum, there's no gas limit on expressing your gratitude. So go ahead and click that like button. Thank you. So that's IPFS. IPFS is a protocol. You sometimes hear that term in blockchain, but it's a protocol for the various servers uh, that are hosting that content to talk to each other, to make that stuff findable. And usually as a consumer, you're going to be working with one of a limited set of gateways to that network to go find that content and deliver that back. And that's basically how IPFS works. And when you look at IPFS CID, that's what's happening. You are going and talking to this web, getting the nearest piece of content that happens to be cached, and then you have it and you are done and and it will always just be that. That means that somebody's got to be caching it, which means there's usually cost associated with caching it, but reading it can be very, very cheap. And that's sort of a traditional blockchain thing. Usually the the uh, writes are more expensive than the reads. And the uh, there are some services out there to try to make uh, that caching easy. Protocol Labs, which is the company behind a lot of the IPFS tech, has a couple of services. One's called Web3.Storage, another one's called NFT.Storage to make it easy to put that content up on the web. There's another interesting, very new uh, initiative out there called Lighthouse Storage. And I think Lighthouse is particularly cool because the promise they're making is you put it up once and then they will make sure that that CID is available and served up forever. So they charge more per gig, like $5 per gig, but they are do it once, right? So we sort of talk about that question of permanence. If you use Lighthouse, they're guaranteeing that that same CID will be there forever. And that kind of brings to Filecoin, which is sort of the other half of it. And Filecoin is a mechanism, a marketplace, essentially, for various servers to offer that content. And basically to say, I will host a certain number of gigs. And someone else says, well, I have gigs of content that need to be hosted. And if you will guarantee to host, you know, my set of storage for a certain number of years, then I'll pay you a certain amount of money. And that's basically how deals get done on the Filecoin network. So their blockchain is for managing the transactions where people are agreeing to store 
versus the IPFS network, right? That's just about how do you find uh, that information. As always, if you want to stay apprised of the latest around emerging tech, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks.